are you afraid of dying? If so, you are not alone. And our next guest says he has always had that fear, but he's already faced it eight times. Before we talk to him, take a look at what happened that day. In 2016, I was uh, 40 years old. It happened on the, in the morning of uh, March 28th, 2016, around 10.30 in the morning. I was about to take my dog Atticus out for a walk. I grabbed the leash and all of a sudden my left arm lit up like it felt like the sun was in my veins. It felt like the 4th of July was going on in my left arm. And I started sweating profusely. I got really, really freaked out. I instinctively called 911 on myself. And I said, I don't know if this is a heart attack or a panic attack or what's going on, but I'm, I'm concerned enough to call, please send an ambulance. Five minutes later, they knocked on the door. I opened the door for them. And I remember them saying, are you the one who called 911? I said, yes. And then it was just blackout. What I was told later was I literally just died, dropped right in their arms in the doorway. They had to rush me down to the ambulance where they revived me six uh, times in the ambulance. They said it was like a ping pong match. Goosebumps. Evan flatlined six times in that ambulance and twice more in the ER before going into a week long coma. Today he's here alive and well to share his remarkable story. Please welcome to the show Evan Wasserstrom. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for having me. Evan, thank you so much for joining us. I have a million questions for you, by the way, but I want to know what happened when you woke up from the coma and did you remember anything from when you were in that coma? Uh, when I first woke up, I was uh, very discombobulated considering it was about five, uh, well, six days later. And I had about like 30 IVs in my neck. Um, I didn't know where I was. Uh, and I just kept trying to escape the ICU bed. I felt like I was being kidnapped or something. I was so discombobulated. Uh, they had to restrain me like by my wrist and my ankles. And finally, when they got my mother and my aunt who flew out from the East Coast to get into the room, I saw them and I finally calmed down and I started to get my faculties back. And I just remember holding onto my mom's arm and saying, I don't want to die. And she's like, you're not going to die. You're already dead. <laughs> wow. So uh, it, it all came back throughout the first 24 hours for me. And then I realized what was going on. So what was your doctor's reaction? Because you had some medical issues that are unexplainable. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, as far as I know, they never kind of closed the case study on me. Uh, my cardiologist, who's the attending at Cedars, um, he was my cardiologist from that that week on, I didn't have a cardiologist before that, uh, he said that, you know, as a scientist, he can't use the word miracle in his vocabulary, but there was no other way to describe it. And he tells his other patients and colleagues about me to this day. Wow. Yeah, talk about being touched by an angel. Do you remember mm -hmm. anything from the time that the firemen showed up at your house to when you woke up from the coma? It's interesting, uh, you know, um, you know, like I said, uh, you know, I just kind of everything went black the minute that uh, they were in the doorway. But um, it was like a memory almost uh, that I kept uh, thinking that, oh, wow, uh, why do I have this, you know, image in my head of uh, me looking down? Uh, mm. Like, I felt like I was like floating in my apartment lobby, uh, almost like, you know, uh, floating in a pool, weightlessness, void of emotion, looking down at them, wheeling me out on the stretcher out to the ambulance. And when I told that to the doctors and nurses, they were like, that's exactly how we got you out of your apartment. Wow. So um, I don't know if that was an out of body experience. Experience, but other authors uh, and uh, people that I've talked to that had near-death experiences and a, uh, a gentleman who wrote many books on that says that countless uh, people say the same exact thing when they were brought back to life. Wow. I can see your posters. You're a Star Wars fan. I have to say the force is very strong with this one. Uh, you actually got to know the EMT that saved your life. What does your relationship with him look like today? Oh, there he is. Look at Aww. that. Yeah. Yeah, Ed, he's uh, he's wonderful. He's a, he's a wonderful man, very spiritual. In fact, he told me, uh, I visited him two months later. I took all the firemen out to breakfast. Wow. Um, kept bringing by, like, you know, donuts and vat of coffee for them throughout that first year. 
but he was actually filling in for a paramedic at that West Hollywood station. Uh, he was from the Los Feliz station. He was just filling in for somebody. And he revived me the six out of the eight times in the ambulance. So uh, they told me that I should go visit him. And when I went to go visit him, I took him out to lunch. And we were just doing lunch basically like once or twice a month uh, for the, you know, up until the pandemic. Right. We haven't really got to see each other since then. But he told me that he was um, about like two weeks from giving his notice because he was doing it for 10 years. He was just kind of wanting to move on. But uh, after reviving me, that's those six out of the eight times he got so inspired by the job. He's still in it today and he's thriving. You saved his two lives were saved. I that's just, amazing. How serendipitous that you guys <laughs> yeah, met under right. those circumstances and, and you're still friends to this day. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Well, I have to ask you on behalf of everybody watching this. Does this cure your fear of dying, like after you've died eight times? Not really. Uh, uh, you know, um, in the, the article I wrote in Insider um, uh, recently, uh, you know, talks about that. Uh, I mean, I thought it would. I really did. I thought, like, okay, I, you know, uh, you know, I experienced that. It's, you know, now I feel invincible, but that's not the case at all. You know, especially like at quiet times in the middle of the night, if I feel like a pain in my arm or a tightness in my chest, it, you know, I think it's like PTSD probably. Um, at least that's, you know, what the doctors say. Um, it uh, it doesn't it doesn't help the experience, uh, you know. But at the same time, I, I you know I'm so grateful to still be here. So it definitely has given me more zest for life. But the fear is not gone because I know that you know uh, I you know I got to cheat death a little bit. But there's still that ninth time coming sometime, you know, for and for everybody. So. Um, it's not really gone the fear. It's just, um, it's just kind of always a part of me. Mm. Wow. This, we have so, I wish we could have like I know. an hour yeah. with I'd people. say you cheat uh, death a lot of bit. Yeah. Eight yeah. times is a lot. Yeah. Someone said, is he a cat? <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps coming. Amazing. I know. But I'm, I, it's, I listen, uh, ending on the note that you have a zest for life now, I think that is beautiful. I can only imagine and how And they connected changed. with the EMT. Yeah. Really I great. amen to that. Evan, thank you for joining us today and sharing your incredible story. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.